G'day guys, today I want to take you through a quick review of the Fregate MBR software. Uh, this is the software that I currently use to detect um, when people come to my front door uh, and to trigger different home assistant uh, things, but also it can be used for recording and is very good at that. So to crack in, what is it? Um, it is network video recording software, uh, which was designed specifically with um, links to Home Assistant in mind, and it has some really excellent links to Home Assistant. One of the things I just want to point out right now is the images that I've got in this uh, review today are taken from the Frigate NVR uh, promotional materials, and the reason for that is uh, I didn't want to really you know, put up stuff from the front of my house. Uh, not that I expect any of you to decide to rock up to my house, but hey, if you want to buy me a beer, there are easier ways, but anyway. Um, so anyway, so getting into, I guess, the meat of this, what are the pros and cons of it? What do I use it for? Is it any good at it? Um, and the big one is it's open source and free. Um, and additionally, it was designed with TensorFlow models built into it, and you have the ability to change and retrain TensorFlow models. Um, so in its most basic form, uh, it will detect people as the primary object. Uh, so you can then take that from, um, you know, from this software which has detected it and then send it to your Home Assistant server. Um, and that's that's the, the pretty good bits about it. Um, to show you what I mean by that, if you have a look on the screen at the moment, you'll see two different things. Uh, one of them is uh, the MT, MQTT Explorer. And you'll see down the bottom here that uh, there's this event thing. Every time the detection service, when properly set up, detects an object, it will then feed a detection event into here. It'll tell you what it is. In this case, it was a person. Um, it'll give you some other information. But what is most important about this is these events can then be used to trigger automations inside Home Assistant, which actually do stuff if that makes um, the second screen that you've got that I've just put up there for the second is the Home Assistant one, and these are all the entities that you can pull directly out um, from the software once you're using the Home Assistant integration. Uh, there's a lot; it's really good, um, and some of the things I use is um, you can take the video that comes out of it. Uh, directly and then feed it into, for example, my mini panels. So I have some uh, NS Par um, Panel Pros uh, and you can feed the video straight from that and also get them to turn on when an event is detected. So you go, all right, those things make it sound great. There are a couple of bits that I want to point out about this software that you kind of need to be aware of before you start down the journey of installing it. Uh, the first one is that the web interface is not secure, um, so it just runs any um, browser on your network, IP address colon 500, uh, 5000, so it runs off port 5000. Um, so one of the things you have to do is ensure that you're not port forwarding 5000 in or out uh, through your router, uh, because that will give basically anybody external access to it if you're doing that. So. To me, that's, that's not great, but um, I have my router set up properly, and as long as you have a good router that is set up appropriately, that won't be an issue for you. Uh, it just means that you can't directly forward uh, this web interface external, so you can't directly access that way through your phone. There are ways to access the video from it, uh, but uh, it's just a little bit more difficult. The second bit is, Installation, especially in initial installation, uh, will take you a long time. Uh, not because it's massive, not because there's a lot of steps, uh, but rather if you have any problems as you're going through, it will just bug out and 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 bug out. Uh, and especially if you're not using, um, you know, well-known brands for the cameras that you're feeding into this. That, that don't have great support material, which the ones that I have, the cameras that I have don't have great support material, 
Um, it means that there's a lot of trial and error, there's a lot of guesswork uh, to ensure that the feeds are going in properly. Uh, and there's some, there's some very specific little bits that you need to pull out when you're doing that. So those are the cons. Once it's set up, it's amazing. It Mine just runs. It just runs and runs and runs. It detects people. Um, I am in the process of training it, so it will detect myself. So when it can't, sees me coming up the corridor, if it's night time, I'll then have the lights turned on internally. Um, but that is a, I guess, next step that I plan to do with this one. So with all that in mind, um, there's a couple of little recommendations that I'd make though with this. If you're planning on using this for its ability to detect objects, um, without a uh, TPU or tensor processing unit, it will run up to about a frame a second detection. Um, depending on the hardware that you've got and how much stuff you want to throw at it. Now, to be honest, you probably don't want to throw big, expensive, power-hungry stuff at it, and I haven't, so I'm running the detection algorithm. Um, well, I started off on the CPU, um, but I've had a Corail TPU for a period of time, and it significantly increases the uh, frames per second that you will get out of it. Up there are some options for the different TPUs, uh, ranging from the USB model to the development board, which you could run all of this off if you were able to connect a hard drive to it, to the PCI M2 slot versions, um, and, and more dev boards down the end. Now, these things are great. Uh, the problem is, number one, depending on where you are in the world, there are pretty hefty export restrictions on these. Uh, so there's lots of places around the world you just won't be able to get it and you absolutely won't be able to get it sent from uh, the states where they're manufactured into a bunch of countries. So if you have a look on their site, they'll be able to, you'll be able to see what countries can and can't get these. The second one at the moment is these were one of those things that suffered during the chip shortages and the price went up and the price went up and the price went up and the price has not come down. Uh, so the PCI versions, which like because I have a micro PC, that is what I'd actually prefer to swap out and put into this thing. I was hoping to get one of uh, one of these, actually no, this one here, uh, for, you know, because I don't use the Wi-Fi slot on my nano PC. Uh, but at the moment, the cheapest you'll find one of them online for, if you can find one, is plus of $300 Australian. So that makes it a little bit painful so noting that I recommend these and that these will make them function a lot better, um, what's my overall recommendation for this thing? Well, I've got to give her three Kangas. Um, and the reason I say that is, yes, it's free. Um, yes, it does a whole bunch of stuff. It integrates really well into Home Assistant. Um, it is very difficult to set up and it will take time and you'll probably throw things unless you know, you have really, really, really excellent um, documentation that came with your uh, cameras uh, or online documentation. And what I mean by that um, is the address to get the video. So that will be different. A lot of different cameras have different ones. Um, I'll put a link down below for a site that I found that generates uh, those um, strings, but it won't work for every camera. So there's just trial and error. Um, additionally, this thing, if it, you know, if you have a TPU, it's probably four Kangas because it then is a lot more powerful in terms of what it can do with the detection. Uh, but straight off the bat, it does a pretty good job. It links to Home Assistant. It can make your um, triggers for Home Assistant a lot smarter. So I do, do still recommend it. I just think you are. Uh, potentially need to make sure you set aside at least a day to set this thing up. Now noting that, uh, I'm in the process of putting together a video to actually uh, take you through the setup. Um, I use Docker's Cortana uh, in particular uh, on an Ubuntu system to do it uh, and I think that is probably the best way because it's a lot easier then to start restart thing as you need. Uh, but 
that will come up in the next couple of days once I get a chance and well to be honest I'm a little bit hesitant to go back through that journey and risk losing my setup files because um, I don't have my other server currently running uh, but hey wish me luck all right guys I hope this has been helpful um, and not too rambly uh, it is absolutely something that could be worth looking at if you've got cameras uh, if you want to record stuff that's coming off just the standard doorbell and want to record it at home rather than sending it off somewhere else uh, it's just something that I guess is a bit of a time investment to start off but anyway guys have a great day and uh, as always stay safe out there